Welcome back to Watercolors with Wendy. This week, our theme is pirates uh, because I run a bar and we had a pirate party last weekend and now I want to do pirate paintings because everything is just whatever I feel like. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do something a little weird this time. Um, the outline will have the boat and to get your circle for the sun, I just used a roll of painter's tape and then outlined the circle wherever I wanted it. And then I used a ruler to dry a, draw in a triangle. We're gonna see how this turns out. Feel free to paint with me. Um, round brushes, it, there's really no rhyme or reason to what brushes I use most of the time. If I use a wash brush, I'll let you know. But for the most part, I kind of grab and paint with whatever I'm feeling. The pirate ship itself is going to be mainly in a silhouette, so we don't need to really worry about leaving it when we paint the sun behind. And I'm calling it a sun because I want this to be almost like the big red pirate moon. So maybe it's a blood moon. We'll call it a blood moon. Maybe that'll work more be better. Uh, more better. Uh, can you tell it's a Monday? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, we're going to get started and I'm just grabbing, I think this is around six and some water and I think I have it so you can see my palette this time. So I'm going to use some scarlet, some Dr. P.H. Martin's orange. some true blue, and my trusty Payne's Gray that has been opened and closed too many times, and I may not be able to get the bottle open. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should do all this ahead of time, huh? <clears throat> Now my palette is literally a plastic paint, a plastic plate from the local grocery store. It's what I like to use for this kind of thing. Um, so that's what I've got. So I'm going to take some of this scarlet. I like how dark it is to start with, and I'm going to just start going in. and dropping the color into my moon. Now you can see there is a little line and that's where I want the water to start. So I'm gonna to try to keep it out of the water. I try to keep my edges pretty smooth. And if it gets a little into my sails, I'm not too worried about it. And I'm gonna grab some of the orange and just make it like fiery. Trying to keep a fairly smooth edge there. Get a little bit of water. My paper towel has moved. Pull this through. I'm leaving some of the sails undone so I can make them a little lighter, but if you can't, it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about these little uh, twirly flags at the top. Let's get some more red. And we're just dropping in color in various places. Kind of give that really dark, bright red blood moon effect. And this is just whatever watercolor paper you have on hand. Um, I think this is cold press. Yes, this is cold press. Some more orange. And 
I'm gonna grab a little of the paint spray. Water it down a little bit. Make it a little darker down in here. some of the blue a couple little squiggles here to give it that make it darker on one side again just to give it a rounded shape dab my brush off more of the blue and I'm going to put that over here on this side. And if you lose a little bit of your outline, don't worry. Uh, pirate sails are pretty easy to draw in, so you should be okay. We're going to do bleed proof white. We're going to do one of my little favorite tricks is bleed proof white get it really wet put it on your palette and I want to do this before I put the sails on because the moon is going to be behind the sails and I'm grabbing my sea sponge which I've been using a lot lately so everybody knows I like myself a sea sponge and I'm just gonna put a couple of little, like maybe crater-esque aspects to this moon. And since it's still wet, that's gonna bleed a little. Let me kinda move those around a little. If you try something and you don't like the way that it works out, just paint over it with a darker color or trust the process and wait for a little bit and see what happens later. Because maybe you will like it afterwards and you just don't like it now. And now I'm gonna make sure my brush is really clean because I don't like the way, well, I, I'm doing the water. So I want the water to be definitely distinct in its own color. We're gonna start over here on this corner. And I had drawn a triangle here. And again, if you get some into your boat, it's no big deal. You can also lay down painter's tape if you want this to have a really smooth line. Now I'm going to turn my paper and I'm just going to keep pulling that this way. Again, now you kind of want it to go into your boat because the boat's sitting in the water. And we're just going to kind of dot in some water around here. This is just kind of a boat going off the edge of the world. What world? Who knows? It's just the world that you have created. And I'm holding my brush really far back to really accentuate the randomness of this whole thing. Okay, so that's really dark up there. I need to pull this down a little bit more because it's not reading that it's joined in. It'll spread and it'll move. Yeah, I like to do sound effects. Um, 
right, now we're gonna try to do this line nice and straight. And water on your brush, just pull it down. Make it have a little bit more of a dark. Pull it down. Water. And in this situation, we're just letting the paint do what it wants. We're letting it lighten where it wants to and get darker where it wants to. We're gonna tip it up on its side, kind of tap it a little, help it run. <clears throat> and then there's this little section here that's behind the boat where the water was a little bit behind the boat, or your horizon line was a little behind the boat. We just wanna keep that nice and dark. And if you're having trouble with the detail here, you can get a smaller brush. You, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's watercolor. <clears throat> Embrace the weirdness that it does. <clears throat> okay. Add a little bit more here to accentuate the edge of our world with that nice straight line. <clears throat> and there you go, there's your background. Probably wanna let that dry for a little bit. I'm gonna move to a smaller brush. Uh, this looks like it's a two. I also have like a triple zero that I may grab for some little teeny lines. So this is my first sale and it's outside of everything that we've painted. So it's a really good one to start with. Get my brush wet and then I'm gonna go straight into the Payne's Gray. Lighten it up just a little bit. So a couple of ways you can do watercolor. Um, with this liquid watercolor, it's really easy to pull the color and lighten it or lift it up a little bit. But if you want to have a really light one, you wanna start with a lighter color and then you can always go darker, but it's harder to go lighter. I'm gonna put in these masks. Now I have an outline of the flag, but you can use the brush to do it yourself. So you don't have to like paint within the lines. Just take your brush and push it down, pull it up and then push it down. Oops, I got some white in that. <laughs> let's, let's fix that up a little bit. So you push down with pressure and then pull it up push down and pull it up to get your little shape of the little squiggly flag. And so there's another one right up here. We can do that the same way. Let's put in the mast first. And then there's a little bit of a mast right here. So I'm pushing down, pulling it up. A lot of pressure, less pressure, spinning less pressure. That gives you a more fluid look. 
So while this one is still wet, I wanna give it some shadows. I'm gonna dry my brush off and get a little bit more of the Payne's Gray. And I want a shadow back in here. So I'm just gonna drop that in and a shadow under here. So it's still wet, so that should bleed it out a little bit. And then you can do my patented touch your painting method to see if your painting is dry enough to move on. And with this little brush again, because I'm doing detail, that's why I want to use the little brush. I'm going to do the rest of the mast. And touch this one up just a little bit more. And then I like to turn my paper. You don't have to, but for me, I just spin it around all the time. So feel free to move it however is easiest for you. We're just putting in this mast. And <laughs> be careful where you stick your fingers. Uh, or you can get a smear. Uh, it's okay. We can either try to take it out later or leave it. And it's just a, you know, I painted this because my fingers get on everything. <laughs> okay. So let's do this little. Okay. Flag. Okay. I'm liking how that flag looks. Let's darken this one up a little. And that mass actually goes down kind of into the center of the boat. <clears throat> well, we're waiting to make sure some of the other areas are dry. Let's get to the darkest part of the painting which is gonna be this inside portion of your pirate ship. So here I am just using straight Payne's Gray and it's not the liquid, it's the tube form. If you have the liquid, use it. If you wanna use straight black, use that. I have an addiction to Payne's Gray, so sorry guys. All right. Okay, so you see here where it's getting a little skippy, um, that's because there's not enough water in my brush. When there's not enough water in your brush, you actually tend to get drags in a, almost a dry brush technique. You need to go in with darker and that will help that go away. <clears throat> okay, so this section here is also gonna be part of our darkest part of the boat. So now you're gonna just take your brush and pull this down. You want it to be slightly lighter just to give the illusion of the steps. Let's darken this up and straighten that line out a little bit.
So I'm switching to my bigger brush and I'm going to try to make kind of a brown. So I'm going to grab some of the blue and some of the orange and that went really green. So let's throw some of the Payne's gray into that. Maybe some of the red. The red helped. <clears throat> So we're getting a darker color, but it's not quite the same as the Payne's Gray, which is the inside of the shadows. And this is a pirate ship that was made out of wood. So we're going to put in wood planks, basically. And I'm painting over these, uh, we'll call them peepholes. <laughs> I don't really know what they're called on a pirate ship. I'm painting over them. I have bleed proof white. So I'm going to probably, I'm going to use that. I know I say I'm going to probably, I'm absolutely going to use that to make a reflection of light coming from the inner cabin of our ship. red in there, There's more pain or blue. I apologize, they are doing road construction right outside my studio. And it is quite noisy. So now I'm just going to go back in and do a couple long strokes to look like boat. Just to kind of give the illusion of wood. It doesn't need to be perfect. Oh, this is a pirate ship. So it doesn't have those nice light sails. It's got dark sails. Black sails, if you will. You've ever seen that show. I am, we're gonna go in. I'm gonna do this little piece of the prow. So if you hold your paintbrush straight up and put a little pressure, you can make really good line, thin lines. I want it to be a little thicker. So that's the prow on the front of the boat. Now for these sails, I do kind of want them to look a little tattered as well. So I'm going to the color across the top and just on that corner like that. And I'm gonna get some water quite a bit of water actually and I'm gonna just bring that down especially on this one that's not in front of the Sun it doesn't need or the blood moon it doesn't need to be as dark I'll just repeat that on the next one across the top Just gonna pull that across. Yeah. 
<clears throat> okay, for these other sets of sails, I'm going to do the dark swoop on both sides and across the top. And I think that'll give me enough to cover up what I put behind it. And what I put behind it can also act as a shadow. Need more paint, less water. I'm going to rinse off the brush in some water and then dip it on my paper towel and just kind of pull these sails so they get a little lighter in the center and then darken them at the bottom. Maybe a little darker. As I am right-handed, it would have made more sense to start with these and then these and then these, but I didn't um, because sometimes I don't do things in the easiest way. So let's get this sail. We're going to do it the same way. I think the smaller brush is going to help me just a little bit here. And some of the other color from underneath has pulled up and that's okay. It's giving it um, quite a fun effect. We're not gonna be upset about it. It's totally cool. So let's do the middle one, you know, cause I have wet on both sides. So let's, let's make this really hard for myself. More dark. Too much is showing through. Water. Tap off. Finish out those sails. Last sail. Little bit more dark for the bottom of the sail. And I'm just putting a little bit more dark in some of the other ones dropping in a little bit of color. It's fairly dry, pretty damp in those sections, so we're, we'll be okay to add in a little bit of color. Okay, now we need to do the crow's nest. 
the crow's nest, the inside of the crow's nest is going to be nice and dark. I'm going to completely flip this over. So the bottom part of this crow's nest is also going to be brown like the ship. So we're going to wait till that dries a little bit. And now we're going to add in some details to try to pull this all together. Right now it's in a weird stage and I know it looks funny. Just trust the process and keep going. So we need a little bit more dark here. And right there. And same with this one. I want this line to be a little crisper. I like that one. I like to use white gel pens. I also used to like, like to use black pens and black Tombow pens um, to add details. It makes it a little easier than trying to do little things with a detail with a tiny brush. So I'm gonna add in some highlights. I think we're gonna put the highlights since it's kind of over here. We just want you to see that this guy is sticking out of the center here. So it needs a little touch of white on one side. it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if you kind of like dot in the gel pen as it uh, releases, because gel pens don't always work super smoothly, especially in something like this, you can get just that little bit of white that you were looking for. Is your eyes usually drawn to your darkest darks and your lightest lights? So this is just going to add a little bit to your painting. And we want to make sure you can see that that post goes in there. Maybe a little here. And a little here. So this is the time where I just kind of step back, look and see what it needs, and try to add that where I think it's appropriate. So it's in the water. So it needs kind of the foam of cutting through the water down here. So I'm just doing squiggly lines. I'm probably gonna come back and use the bleed proof white sea sponge technique, uh, but I wanna have a kind of an outline before I do that. Actually, we'll say it's going through the water this way, so it's pushing it back like that. And if you don't like that, don't do it. 
It's fine. I will not be offended if you don't do it the way I do it. There's always a lot of water that comes out from the, or a wake, wake that comes out from a big ship from the back. So we wanted to give it a little bit of a wake. And I want a little separation right here between the boat and the horizon water line. I'm kind of crisping up some of these edge lines. kind of helps quite a bit. So let's draw in these circles. I know they're not perfect. You can use a circle maker, a compass, or something where you shade the circles. And then I'm just going to pull some cup, pull across. So now we're going to try, I think I'm just going to use a black pen. Uh, no, what we're going to do first is we're going to finish this crow's nest. And I'm grabbing a little brush and the leftover brownish paint that I used, maybe a little bit more red in it, a bit more blue in it. It should make purple, but these colors do want to make purple, probably because that uh, blue or the orange, the red, it's a little orange. Get our crow's nest painted. It's a little bit of a dark. We're just going to add some little lines. <clears throat> now ships have ropes and rigging and all sorts of stuff that comes everywhere so I had a few in the outline I'm just gonna kind of draw them in that mast a little bigger here so we can have the sail draw line pulling it back. I want to do the same for these. So just 
making kind of the rigging that the mast is sitting on. Just using this pen to add these details. And you can make that stick out a little bit. Do that for this one. I want some light boards. And I think our windows need to be dark around the light. So I'm gonna re-go around these with my black pen. A lot of times painting with me, I come in with an idea of what I want, but I haven't tried it yet. So you are seeing in real time how I alter, make alterations and adjust to get it to kind of look the way that I am feeling. <clears throat> okay, I think that helped a lot. So the last thing we're gonna do is kind of add some more sea foam in there. And we're gonna do this with my bleed proof white on the palette. So bleed proof white is basically just white gouache. Um, I apologize for my phone going off in the background. <laughs> Once again, we're grabbing the sea sponge, just kind of dipping that in there. And I like the way the sea sponge gives me an irregularity. There we go. So you have the lines still from the pen, but now you have like sea spray from your pirate ship. And then let's make it kind of look like a waterfall-ish down here on the bottom here. That's super fun. Okay, so now we still have this smudge. Let's make it a bird. Right? Like, there's obviously birds flying around this pirate ship. I mean, it's not a parrot, but it can be a little bird. We'll just fill in that, swoop it down a little bit, give it a little bit of a beak, and turn it around. And then do another little line, and you have a little bird. But you can't just have one bird, so we need to put in a couple more birds. Maybe one down in here in the light. And then pull that tail out a little bit. There we go. And then another one right over here. So there's just like three birds going across. And my phone again. But this one's facing back this way. So there you have it, a pirate ship painting under a blood moon. No, we're not done. <laughs> Grabbing some of the blue proof white and putting a little bit of a highlight right here.
And there, we'll call that done. So grab your pen or however you like to sign your paintings. I like to sign mine within the painting because I'm weird. And I like to put the year so you know when I did it. <clears throat> but there you have it. It's a pirate ship. It's pirate week. Uh, there's another painting that'll drop on Friday. It's a treasure map. I'm so excited. Anyway, you can get the outline uh, on my website. There's a minimal fee to get the outline or draw it yourself. But the uh, minimal fee helps me continue to do these. So if you don't mind supporting me that way, that would be excellent. Anyway, I hope you guys had a great time painting this painting. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.